Hey guys, you're here. Welcome to our upper extremity ultrasound Doppler protocol. I'll be demonstrating this tutorial with my handheld portable high quality transducer probe. This is called the Butterfly IQ transducer. We'll begin by taking images of the IJ with your transducer in the transverse position. Place it on the patient's neck with your index pointed anteriorly. Acquire images with just 2D with you compressing the IJ to make sure that there's nothing obstructing like a DVT. Then turn your transducer so it's in the long axis view. This is also called the sagittal view with your index pointed superiorly or towards the patient's head. Turn on color, take an image of that. Then turn on pulse wave and acquire images with spectral Doppler waveforms. Next, we're gonna acquire images of the subclavian vein. You'll start by compressing the subclavian vein in the transverse view with the index pointed superiorly or towards the patient's head. You can either go above or below the clavicle, whichever one's easier. Take an image showing compression of the subclavian vein, showing that there's no DVT. Start by placing the transducer in the sagittal view or the long axis view below or above the clavicle, depending on where you get the best images. And make sure from here on out that you have the index pointed towards your patient's right side, no matter which side you're working on. Unless of course you're recording your transverse views in which then your index will be 90 degrees to your sagittal views. Turn on color and acquire an image with you augmenting the patient's lower arm to show that there's no major obstructions anywhere between where you augment or squeeze to right where your transducer is at. Then turn on pulse wave and acquire an image of spectral Doppler waveforms showing that you augmented from the patient's forearm. You'll repeat these steps for the mid and distal subclavian vein. Next, we're gonna acquire images of the axillary vein and then if the patient permits it, have them lift up their arm, place the transducer in their armpit with the index pointed anteriorly, acquire images in 2D of the axillary vein. It's gonna look like a circle on your screen to make sure that there's no DVTs. Then turn your transducer so that your index is pointed superiorly or towards the patient's head, turn on color, and acquire images of your color doppler going through your axillary vein and augment your patient's forearm. Then acquire images of spectral doppler waveform with pulse wave with you augmenting the patient's forearm. And you only have to do this in one spot for the axillary vein. Sometimes if you can't have the patients lift up their arm, then you have to kind of tuck your transducer in between your patient's arm and thorax and kind of push up, make sure you have plenty of gel. I just kind of maneuver around and eventually you'll find it. Turn on color, because color will be your best friend in this scenario. Next, we're gonna look at the brachial veins. So you're gonna start in the transverse view on the medial side of the patient's upper arm until you see a Mickey Mouse view. This is the brachial artery and two brachial veins. All you have to do is acquire an image of you compressing the two veins. Then you're gonna to move to the mid area, take another image by compressing the brachial veins turn to the sagittal view with the index pointed towards the patient's head, turn on color and acquire image with color. You don't have to use spectral Doppler waveforms if you don't want to. Then you're gonna to go to the distal area in the transverse view and compress the brachial veins that way. The basilic vein will usually branch off the brachial vein about the mid biceps area. So I will start up high and then slowly move down or distally until I see a vein branching off the brachial vein. This will be the proxbacillic vein. You'll begin by compressing the vein in a transverse view. Move the transducer more distally or towards the patient's hand until you get to about the mid basilic area. Take an image of you acquiring, you compressing the basilic vein, then turn your transducer in the sagittal view, turn on color, augment, and take an image of that. Then turn on pulse wave and acquire an image of you augmenting the patient's forearm. Then turn your transducer in the transverse view and move distally and acquire images of you compressing the basilic vein in the distal region. Next, we're going to look at the patient's ulnar veins. Place the transducer in the transverse view with the index pointing towards the patient's right in the distal region, so right by the patient's wrist on the medial side. Acquire an image with you compressing the veins. These veins are extremely small in most patients, so you might have to use your best friend, color Doppler, to find the ulnar artery, in which then you'll be able to find the ulnar veins. Compress the distal region, then move to the mid, stay in the transverse view, compress those ulnar veins, then move proximally. Next, you're going to go to the radial artery, which is on the lateral side of the patient's wrist. Stay in the transverse view, acquire images of you compressing the radial veins. Then you're going to move to the mid area, compress the radial vein there, then move proximally and compress those veins there. Again, you don't have to go to your sagittal view for any of these veins if you don't want to. It's perfectly fine to stay in the transverse view. Finally, we're gonna look at the cephalic vein. And the distal cephalic vein in most patients 
will start on the back side of the patient's wrist. We'll have the patient prone their hand, keep the transducer in the transverse view, acquire an image of you compressed in the cephalic vein. Then you're gonna to move to the mid forearm, acquire an image there. Then you'll repeat those steps for your proximal forearm cephalic vein. Next, you're gonna move your transducer to your upper arm, just above the elbow in the transverse view, acquire an image of you compressed in the cephalic vein there. Then you're gonna to move to your mid cephalic vein, compress in the transverse view, turn your transducer in the sagittal view with your index pointed towards your patient's head, acquire an image with color and spectral Doppler waveforms, then turn back to your transverse view, move to your proximal portion of your cephalic vein, try to see if you can follow it dumping into your subclavian vein. Make sure you evaluate the cephalic vein really well because I find more clots there than any other vein. Finally, you're gonna look at the patient's contralateral side by evaluating the patient's internal jugular vein by using the same protocol as before and then looking at the patient's subclavian vein. I'm David Lopez on BoardReview.com. Thank you so much for watching.